Welcome to this week's edition of The Nero Show, your home of unfiltered cycling chat. In this week's episode, decathlon are rumoured to be joining the world tour ranks. Are Campy's days numbered at the top end of the sport? New bikes, new tech at Sea Otter in the US. While Jesse and I show off our new bikes. Or are they? All right, let's get into it. All right, can we talk a little bit about our bikes at the moment? Sure. All right. Yep. Mine's better than yours. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I got here more views. Go. Here we go. <laughs> what are you on? 50. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, that, I'm glad you brought that up because I think Jesse Coyle, I'm going to talk straight to the camera here. <laughs> I think Jesse Coyle is now the premier rim break ambassador. On YouTube. Oh, man. Discuss. <laughs> I think you are. I don't want to be the real. <laughs> who else? Who else? Give me, give me some other names. I think you are it. I think you're, you're the most relevant, like, active. You, you play this whole, like, <laughs> like oh, I'm just racing the bike, whatever. But then you've got, like, the training-y bit. So people kind of think, oh, he must know something. <laughs> he must know. And, yeah, I, I reckon I reckon you have you have a Hardcore following of rim break people, and you're you're at the head. You're Full the audience capture. Yep. Well, I genuinely like rim brakes. It's just I, I they better. I've already got rim brake wheels. It's easy to maintain. It's lighter. The bike rides well. I don't want disc. So get stuffed. So I'm I'm staying on rim. As everyone else shows their new disc bike bike. Why can't I show my rim brake bike? Oh god, that's going to trigger them all now. <laughs> oh yeah, Jesse, go, Jesse. Go. <laughs> oh, doing. <laughs> so annoying. All right. But I love your comment when pe- people bring it up and you're like, well, if I was the strongest symbol, I would ride rim brakes. That I you. need my disc bike so I can save two watts. Like, shut up. You're just as bad of like pandering to the like the tech people about how many watts they're saving. So you, you, I had you can t- get off your high horse. <laughs> I had a totally different comment written. And then I was like, no, I'm going to really annoy oh, him with this oh. one because he'd be like, fuck off, Chris. Yeah. Right, so you're on that. Talk me through it. Like, if oh, obviously link the video down below, but talk me through the build. Come on, it's new good. bike day. It's good. So, well, new bike day, rim brake, TCR. Um, I guess the only thing. So I did that video, and the 80 mil wheels I have, which are clincher, the cadence, really good. Um, I got roasted for running a 23 mil tire on the front and a 25 on the rear. People are like, you cannot ride that. You will be shaken to death. After 20 minutes. So I've actually, sw- I, I listened to my commenters. Mm. I accepted that I probably should be running wider and I can fit just, and I mean just, a 20 mil tire on the rear. So I'm running that and I've put 25 on the front. So, so what's the internal width of those wheels? I'm not sure. It would be the standard from, uh, I think it's probably 19 mil. Or- okay. Yeah, so 28 is pretty wide back there. Yeah, 28 is pretty – but it actually helps me out that the, that the rims aren't super wide because if it was a wider rim, there's no way I'd fit that, that 28 there. Mm. So – and the fact that the wheels are, um, are built so well that they have so little lateral flex, somehow it doesn't rub, which is amazing. You so said this to me the other day actually, like that have you ever noticed how well balanced – like a really well balanced wheel? Yeah. Do you want to just quickly talk about that? Right. Because I thought that was cool. Yeah, yeah. so there's yeah. some things about – okay. I yeah. have run fast sports wheels in the past. I've run – I've run – yeah, the Chinese carbon stuff. I've been happy with wheels. I generally think they're fine. And I, I really hate when a wheel company is like, oh, they're from that cheap factory and thing. I'm like, well, I've raced them for years and they fucking work. So shut up. If you want to sell your product, produce a good product that has benefits. So riding the Cadence, for example, you're paying a little bit of a premium, but uh, they're still relatively good value. And I went into them right being like, are these just going to be the same as the other ones? And they are things that he's done with them, particularly in the way they're built, which are good. So on the de- so he's got Cadence and then the Decadence, which is the upper level ones, a few hundred bucks more. But he balances the wheels, which I'd kind of heard about in the past. I'd never really given much thought to. And I, sp- I picked the bike up. I spin that, get that 80 mil um, rear up to speed and I can hold it with one finger yeah, and sick. it doesn't do the vroom, mm. vroom, vroom, which you'd have to think up at speed is either impacting your steering or potentially slowing you down. Oh, have to slow you down. Yeah. yeah. You'd, I, I've I'd rarely noticed that, but only when I've run sort of 60s and plus, 
is you do start to feel that that what do you call it like wobble mm. almost i remember on the c60s that were you know don't get me wrong they were lightning fast they were tubs but you definitely did feel that when you got them up to speed the whole bike would do the yeah. Woof, 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 woof. Kind yeah. Of thing. yeah, yeah. So these were quite nice. When I was cleaning the bike, I spun the wheel. I was like, "Holy, that's I've never felt that before." So he spends time balancing, which is good. And then the lateral, the lateral movement is cr- is crazy. I can have the brakes. Usually, I have to have, like open the brakes right up so that the wheels don't rub when I'm sprinting. I'm like, oh. But um, no, no. So he, yeah. So I can have that 28 mil tire very close to the frame and the brake bridge, and it it doesn't rub, and that's genuine improvement over other wheels I've used. What was the reaction to the bar stem combination? Polarizing? Yeah. Or? No, uh, everyone liked it. Although I did feel like I missed a beat there and I was a bit of a sellout because it would have, if I really wanted to double down on the audience, I would have run like, I would have gone to AliExpress and bought a $200 integrated one and used that. Uh, and there were people like, oh, nine hundred dollars on integrated bars. Well, what do you need that for? I'm Mainstream like, well, sellout. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I don't Hang need on. it, but they're nice, <laughs> and I wanted to buy them. Like, get off my back. <laughs> so that was that was yeah the thing on those. Oh, and I still haven't put bar tape on them. Yes, Chris, and you know that. Yeah, I yeah. Know. well spotted, Rob. <laughs> well spotted. Yeah, you got caught out for that. Yeah, uh, and back to clinches as well, which you did just mention. on those because yeah, okay. they're not tubeless, which is well, like. It's okay. okay. It's fine. They're right. well it's still run the high road clinches. Oh, another thing, people are so thinking about I'm like, I I did the video and I, I run the Maxis High Road because I've got them left over from when we were running them with the team and I bought a bunch of them. And they're good. They don't puncture that often. I've raced them. Yes, you go on bicycle rolling resistance and the GP five thousand is faster, I know. And people love to like maybe because I said it was a fast bike and people are like, Well, you're losing five watts from the tire. But I'm like the high roads are fine. They work well. I've got them. I'm not going to go and buy new tires to save three watts. So I don't know. I have a feel like just use the stuff you've got first. Yeah. yeah. People are also like, well, why would you buy it? Why, why the TCR? What's the deal with that? And the thing is, so the Devel that I was on, super stiff, happy with. Handling was fantastic. Pure race bike was happy with. So I wanted to upgrade and basically get the Devel, make it lighter and make it more com- uh, a smoother ride, more compliant. And that's what the TCR is. The TCR, in my mind, is like the Devel if they had a few more years to iterate it. And that's, that's perfect, exactly what I wanted. Yep. So, yeah, ha- really happy with it. Yep. No, it's uh, – I like it. We're going to the N- NC, uh, a- NC001. First week of riding. Well, how? What's the weight at now? How well, many grams has it shed? Can, yeah, let's let's talk about let's talk about my video. Let's talk, let's talk about me. It's about Chris. Okay, um, your video. Well, yeah. well, just just generally the, the mm-hmm. kind of, now. Obviously, we have this chat uh, episode twenty five. I have my little sook about factor and all the rest of it. And you annoyingly came up with a fucking brilliant solution that I had never even thought about, which was stuff it all, Chris. Just Get a bike, wrap it, don't tell anyone what it is, put your own Nero design on it and be done with the whole thing. Mm-hmm. He turns did it. out You listen to me. Turns out <laughs> you were not only a good idea, but that was that was so right. So the the little quick backstory about this is Peter at Bunny Hop Cycling actually reached out on your suggestion and said, look, if you want to do it, uh, we've got the tech to do it. Um, we can go wild with it and no one will ever know, et cetera. You can just have some fun with it. And that's exactly what I did. So I got a bike. I sold the factor, as we talked about last week, mm-hmm. got a bike and had so much fun designing this this thing. Like I can't tell you how <laughs> – because I've done some like designing bikes obviously with the Devels in the past and you are always constrained about like uh, pallets, the more paint you add, the more weight you're adding, then uh, just even in terms of the skill of the artist doing it, it's incredibly skilled sort of practice and the expense just goes bananas. Plus it's like a lifetime commitment. It's a lifetime like commitment. Once you paint that thing, Yep. I, I was thinking about this on the way over, I'm like, geez, it's good that you wrapped that because imagine if you got inspired and you painted it purple and then you a year later you're like, oh, what the fuck was I thinking? That's so cringe. And you're stuck with the painted frame. Yep. Yeah. And the thing with designing with with a vinyl wrap is everything is on the table. 
literally everything to the point of I sat down with my seven-year-old daughter and we drew the family and that is now on my bike as well. Mm -hmm. And my favorite superhero is on the bike as well. And so we put in all the scenes. Anyway, you, you've potentially seen, seen the bike itself. So the whole process was really, really exciting and got it on there. And it's so fast. So bike arrives a couple of days later um, and Peter wraps it, wraps it for me. It doesn't even have to. The actual process, you don't even have to um, disassemble the bike. He just had the wheels off. He had the crank off. And it just sticks it all on. Hmm. So, so the whole process really got me thinking, why don't more people do this? Now, this I sat in front of you weeks ago and when you suggested that, it like had never crossed my mind to do this. So I kind of gone, gone back thinking through like why, why has this never crossed my brain to, to have ever done this? So... The first thing you probably think about maybe is the expense of it. So just specifically talking about bunny hop cycling, you've got options that go down to like 250 bucks, which is just a complete DIY kit where you actually physically put the – so you can do your own um, design, but you end up putting it on the bike, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Up to sort of $1,500, which is he installs it and – more intricate design. He's involved a little bit with the, the design process and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, but again, your, your top end's nothing, nothing like a custom paint job and nothing like the time, the time of a custom paint job, the faff of a custom paint job and second one being the weight. Okay. So here's a question. And the cost of rebuilding. If you get your frame painted, you have to take it to a mechanic to rebuild the entire thing. Yep. That's another yep. what, 500 bucks. How much do you think the full wrap yep, of yep, yep. that? I know weight. vinyl can be like surprisingly heavy. Look at all that so, design. Look at the all entire that. frame. I would not be surprised if it was added a 150 grams to the frame. 90 grams. 90 grams. Yeah, which I okay. thought was, was much lighter than I thought. And I've even seen some of like people commenting on the, the Instagram post or the video saying, oh, why would you go and add two or three hundred grams to your bike with all that kind of stuff? Well, it's not basically. It's right. not. So it's pretty reasonable. It's, it's and like to that. have just gone as mental as that with a with the the wrap kind of made me pretty happy about it. You're um, really selling it to me so, now. I'm yeah. thinking, why don't more people do this? It's it's it seems like it just ticks every. And the fact that you can just if you if you get a year later and you don't like it, you can take it off. So I realized that sort of monologue sounded a lot like a sales pitch. It did. It did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But okay. Why don't people do it? And and I'd never cross my mind to do it. And is it because is it because of the sec of what I'm now finding, which is the oh so what is it? Oh so what is it? It's almost like do you do you want to rep like even you just you buy a trek, you want to show people that you bought a trek. Uh, do you yeah. know, like yeah, well, you're attracted. I, I, most people when they buy a bike like the brand and want to show it. Just like if you buy a T-shirt and it's got a little Ralph Lauren logo, you don't want to just wear an unbranded. Most people would prefer to have a bit of a logo. That's just why. Yeah, which I know that's just the human brain. It <laughs> loves is it's super branding. interesting yeah. though, because like you know we kind of sit and whinge about brands and that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, we do seemingly mm. – I was that person a few weeks ago saying, oh, I really I love that brand. Like, like I wouldn't out. want to ride an unbranded frame. Yeah. Like I just – you look down, there's no brand. Mm. I, I I don't know why I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. I mean a Nero branded frame, um, I'd be on board. But yes, not an unbranded. Am I under any obligation to tell people what it is? Because the conversation goes like this. Anytime anyone sees the bike or even comments on it, it will be like, oh, comment about the rap, really like it, hate it, whatever. Then there's an awkward pause and they go, so what is it? <laughs> Am I under any obligation to say what it is? No, it's an aero road frame. Yep. I was going to say, what, brand, what have people said it is? Like, Are, are oh. you getting like... Have you gotten people think it's 20 different things or is it people splitting hairs between two different frames? Um, most people have suggested three different frames or then just the kind of generic like um, like a wind space or something. Like a Deng Fu thing. Yes, yeah, okay. correct. Yeah, right. that kind of thing. Interesting. And, okay, that's, that brings up the other thing, which was like 
So people are asking me, like, oh, I'm interested to know why you chose that brand. I'm like, no. but that's <laughs> why we got here in the first place, guys. Chris uh, is just riding this bike. It doesn't matter. It's a yeah. bicycle. That's it. Fuck you, what brand it is. Yeah. It. And, like, uh. I'm being super tongue-in-cheek with, like, j- just calling it, like, I'm being a smart ass about calling it a Nero <laughs> show bike. I'm sorry. I am a smart ass. Like, the video... Massive shout to Grant for just letting me take the complete piss out of him for it. Um, and I wanted to do a homage to Grant's style, though I didn't edit it on the phone. Uh-huh. I actually did put it into Final Cut. Mm, just sell out. Sold out. Freaking sell out. To do that. But he got he got the joke, which I kind of thought was cool. And he really liked the thumbnail, which took me some time, but I got I got as close as I could to, to Grant. But, like, that's it. It's, oh, it's, it's just a, funny. People just like, oh, but what, what, is what brand is it? I want, like, uh, oh, yeah, like just – as if it's going to validate some idea in their head they had about how well performing a bike is. If you want to know how good a bike is, try and look up how well reviewed it is by people that are going to give an honest opinion, not just who's riding it. Yep. So, yep. And you saying what brand it is is just feeding into the whole reason why you shouldn't buy a bike. Yep. Unless you're just buying it for the froth, which is uh, fine, but you've got to be honest with where that is. So, it's, so the psychology of it is very interesting. So two bike review videos, both were homages. All right, Jesse, I'm, I reckon I know what you did. All right, come on, tell us. Was it? Was it? Yeah, it, yeah, was. it was. Go on. It was. It was Mr. Arthur. It was. Yeah, I, went it was through, yeah. Yeah. I went through his video, wrote down every single thing he did and did like a wish version of it because it was nowhere near as good. But I pretty much just copied it. One person in the comments said, oh, this is funny. It's like a Dave Arthur video. <laughs> so that's what I was going for. I didn't check what shoes you were wearing. It would have to be Vans. And, yeah, massive shout to Grant for letting me take the complete piss out of him for that. And, yeah, let us know down below, guys, whose video was best. No, um, the rap. Why, why aren't people rapping? Um, why aren't people rapping? Yeah. Be a name for the show, actually. Yeah. Um, is Jesse Coyle the new ambassador for rim brakes? And, oh, finally, that was not an ad for Bunny Yop Cycling, though he is going to make that rap available, he tells me, at some point, which is kind of cool. Just go and get a Nero bike. But how does that work? Does he have, like, a stock of the different people's different frames and then he let You let size? them know. So he'll – so your bike, yours is generically a rim brake road bike. It's under a certain sort of thing. Um, it's not – it's not right. model year specific. Oh, okay, right. Like gotcha. mine was a row disc aero bike. Oh, okay. Type thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So Decathlon have announced that they are going to be producing a high end road bike, and I reckon Jesse that this is a big deal. So just okay. Well, just a little bit of a backstory about Decathlon. Decathlon are a big European department store, sporting department store. A bit like in the US, you have places like Dick Sporting Goods. In Australia, we have kind of Anaconda, I think, is probably sort of that type of thing. They, mm-hmm. they do like rock climbing, they do rugby, they do everything, right, in this, in this store. But what's really cool is they've announced that they're going to do a top-end road bike. So I'll just quickly read the details of it. The brand is called the Van Rysel. It's RCR. It's a claimed 7.2 kilo aero road bike. <laughs> There's no way that's going to be 7.2 kilos anyway. Yeah, that might be a pie in the sky. Maybe no pedals, no bottle cages, no handlebars, no saddle, 7.2 kilos. Anyway, um, no, well, they're claiming the frame weight's 800 grams, but Mm -hmm. we'll we'll move on. They're also also doing a titanium gravel bike. But here's the thing. The the, um, high-end road bike they're claiming is about $7,000 and the top of the range – Titanium bike is $4,000. Okay. Okay. Any comments on that frame itself? Do you see anything? Because like, I saw it from all this sea otter stuff that's coming out. Um, and, I mean, we're going to have to say it, aren't we? <laughs> we're going to have to. I mean, it looks like an SL7. It does have a, I, it does I, have I, a look. Like, it does have a look about it. Uh, now, I think it, the bike was released. I think the bike actually was released a while ago because I've seen. I remember seeing photos of it, but let's just say like it's a. Yeah, I have a, I have a little bit of info on that. I did okay. a little bit of digging, yeah. and uh, there's some similarities to the new look frame mold. Right. Yep. Yes. The yep. Cafetus one. Yep. yep. The anyway, new one. That's yeah. As we know, molds. 
doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's all about the layout. Which is a good thing, might yes. I add. Yep. If you just a, if you're a decathlon with a Van Riesel, you're not going to go and try and reinvent the wheel. Just do something that's similar to the current top end bikes. Yep, hundred yeah. percent. Now, as you said, you've seen this a while ago. It wasn't massive, massive news. But I think what is really cool news is that there are pretty strong rumors that this bike or a version of this bike is going to be ridden in the World Tour in 2024. Now, the reason I think this is a big deal is, well, Decathlon used to be in the World Tour. People are going to correct me. There's been lots of like iterations of the Decathlon brand. I think it was B-Twin at one stage. Yep. There's been other versions of it. They've been in the World Tour in the past. And it actually like hasn't happened for 15, 20 years. I know it was certainly occurring in the 90s. And it harks back to a time when – it harks back to a time. But when like bikes were very, very achievable at that level and mm -hmm. it, it created a real tangible link between the top end of the sport and the dude – of the chick who just walks into a legit department store like Target and can b walk out with a bike. So mm. that's that's why I think it is a big deal. Mm. Yeah. That's – who are they going to swap with? Interesting doing, uh, question, like, Jesse Coyle. There are rumours. I can't see where that's going to fit in. You can't fit a certain French team who have been – very, very proud of their brown shorts mm. in previous years. Ag two R okay. potentially. Right. I mean, it's clearly it's it's got to be on a French team. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yep, French team. They're, the the decathlon market is somewhere around seventy percent French, so obviously it's okay. going to be onto a French team. Look, yeah, Ag two R are the rumored team that it's going to to be on. This will clearly mean if that does occur, a move away from Campagnolo for Ag two R. Mm -hmm which is an issue because they're the last campy team. And I know that there's already people in the comments saying that they're the, I don't know, the history of racing. They kind of are. Mm. Like in my lifetime, there has always been a campy team in the World Tour. So if this happens, there's no campy team. Couldn't care less. Tour. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> what is there, one, like one team still on it? Ah, oh, well. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but with the So in my mind... They will be doing what Giant was to me when I was getting in. Giant was that just top value, kind of boring stuff. And now they've gone more of down the high end route. So to have, yeah, to have a brand like that come in, World Tour, it's kind of funny. It's just like we could just get into the yeah. World Tour. We're set. It's so, it's so crazy how potent the World Tour is. For selling, see, I wonder a lot with this stuff. If so, who's who's the biggest hurdle? Right? Is it is it the team saying shit? No, we don't want your slop like department bike. Yeah. Or is it the money that is required to be involved in it? And I feel like in this circumstance, it's probably the team taking the punt. Do you know? I have to think it's. You'd have to say it's going to be more than the money because you don't see bike swap teams that often and if it was just about the money at the end of every season you just have a bidding war and then it'd just be musical chairs between between the teams but it's not so there's got to be yeah a performance thing okay so i feel like the really well run teams don't change that much mm -hmm. okay like everything's set secure they've got their like ducks in a line okay quick step um bora um, name something that's not a specialized team, Chris. Um, uh, Ineos, you know, they don't they don't actually move that much, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas I feel like, and sorry to shit on you again, bike exchange, but like, you know, how many in our lifetime, how many bike brands have of bike exchange been through? Scott, Bianchi, Bianchi Giant. I feel like there's another one that we're missing. Anyway, that was a yeah, that's yeah, the but the, they've yeah. sort of gone through. Were they this. on Bianchi? Am I going absolute bonkers? No, they were Bianchi. Yeah, for like one year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. After, like, after, that's going to be very embarrassing if they weren't actually After we left Bianchi, you know, Bianchi had to oh, go and find to, another yeah. team. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Um, yeah, so they kind of just move around. So I kind mm. of feel like maybe 
for the sort of second, third tier teams, it, it does become a bit more of a musical chairs because you're kind of, I don't know, maybe you've got less to offer maybe? I'm not sure. Or is it not necessarily like the product itself that changes but you're learning how that product works and what works well on that bike, what perform, what doesn't perform well and then maybe if you're working with uh, a brand, they're helping you with wind tunnel time and, and product testing and like – just staff, like employees, to help with that process. Maybe they're providing that. Otherwise, it is surprising that the brand that the uh, teams don't change brands more often. I really doubt, like, Bike Exchange would go out and be like, "Okay, next year we've got to get on the Cube because mm -hmm. it's a perform." I just don't see them being in that position. Option C with this is it comes back to everything in cycling, which is just it's a boys' club, and so it will be. Oh, so and so's moved over to uh, Giant next year. Um, he said he might be able to hook up with a with a deal. What do you mm. reckon? Like, I honestly, reckon yeah. it probably comes back to <laughs> we that. We may be overanalyzing. Yeah. It just be someone's mates with someone yep. at the marketing department, and yep. they've come to an agreement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Coming back to while well, I'm on a bit of a on a bit of a roll here, Jesse. Mm -hmm. um, BMC then leaving uh, AG2R potentially, moving to Chris's new team, um, Tudor Pro Cycling. Mm -hmm which is a non-World Tour. I think they're pro-Conti with the ambitions of going World Tour in the not-too-distant future. Um, be interesting, BMC being out of the World Tour technically then, potentially for a bit. Um, but a Swiss team, Swiss riders, Swiss brand, does that, does that matter to you? Does that mean anything it's to you? It's an easy sell. Mm. It's an easy sell for sponsors. It's an easy sell to a race organiser. It works really well. That's potentially a big one. So I heard I, like it. I heard Lantern talking a bit about um, Remco. And Remco gets he, – he phrases it like the the hometown discount or something like that, that to sign with a Belgian team, he did a, he did a discount or did them a service by, by – signing with them because he wanted to be on a Belgian team because he's a Belgian rider and all that kind of stuff, right? Yep. That puts all those sort of things in a line. Does that does There's that matter? There's 100% something in that. Yeah. Not that I have any inside got knowledge on it, but if you're Remco Evenpol and you sign for UAE Team Emirates, is that going to help you domestically with your own sponsors? Like he does ads for Pizza Hut and stuff. No. If you sign if you're a Belgian on a Belgian team, Double the fans, yep. double the other sponsorships outside of that. You just you become a superhero. So it's a smart decision for, yeah. for him. When I like supposedly Valverde was very similar, like it was straight sort of in the Spanish the Spanish frame. But then you've got the opposite, which is the 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 hometown hero who gets paid extra just because they're the hometown hero. Like on the French teams, on FDJ and stuff. That you know the the Thibaut Pinots and the French riders that are just on. High in the sky salaries, not results based, just because they're so high profile. Yeah. So it works both ways, I think. And they're so French, like yeah. Tommy Vokler. Yeah. Just overplayed. Do you reckon it do you reckon it goes down to the to the bike brand angle as well? Do you think that matters? Like even like those French teams, okay. Lapierre, I just could never see them on a giant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think it does matter. I wonder if they get, get in the room, get all the sponsors together and they're all sitting there and they're going, moving little pieces around. You'd think so. Oh, I think so. Yeah. A room filled with smoke, cigar smoke <laughs> and the smell Drinking of whiskey. cognac. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Just the last thing on that bike brand itself, the Decathlon bike brand. So it's going to be sold, as we said, in the department stores in, in Europe, which is great. But obviously there aren't decathlon stores in places like the US, so there will be a dealer network of them. And maybe we can chat to, to Grant at some point about this, but this is again going to be something along the route of, you know, distributors. Are we going to see that, like, it's kind of funny. the cut? I've had my thing to say about distributors and dealers in the past, but, like, imagine walking into a decathlon store and dealing with some 16-year-old selling you a seven grand Jura Ace SL7 lookalike. Like, they're not going to know anything. How are they meant to... How's oh, I want to come, oh what's this? the stem length on this? Oh, I'd like to come narrow. Like, they're not going to help you at all. Like, what a weird, weird experience that's going to be. Imagine going to Rebel Sport and yeah. Broadway and yeah. buying a $10,000 bike. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know how they're going to deal with that. Like, where do you, and then where do you take it for like people buying um, bikes in a from a bike shop? Do it because then you, you take it there to get service. They know the bike. Where are you going to get your Van Rysel? I was watching a lot of that Sea Otter stuff, yeah. and there's so many brands that I've just never heard. It just the rise of the of that like boutique brand, but I wonder like how. <laughs> like, you know, like how do they, how are they surviving? But they always have a get. It's like it'll be a boutique brand and their selling point is it come with 25 different mounting points for your fenders and your racks or whatever, which you can't get on the, the regular bike. I, I, I like it. I like that. Oh, I, I love it. Yeah. Don't get I, me wrong. I highly rate that. I, no issue. I was just amazed that there's so many of them. They all seem to be actually surviving. Though, well, it's so hard to get there. How are they going to, if you're starting up a, Boutique frame company. How do you actually get your name out? That would just be. Geez, yep. you have to have some balls to get into that as a business. Here's one. Like, do you reckon? Do you reckon? And Dave, if you can answer this down below. But if Dave, I don't are, think Dave watches. No, the no, you don't, yeah, I don't think he does either. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you reckon one of those brands would give him a little kickback to to show his show that bike? No, that was I. I I would have to. Th- Okay, oh, mm. I think he does. I think he deserves it, mm-hmm. and I think if he's featuring your brand in one of his Sea Otter walk around videos, why shouldn't he be paid? Because it's free advertising. Uh, do brands pay him? Oh, I don't. Well, I don't. Know. Going on I don't YouTube, think it's the done. I don't think it's the done mm-hmm. thing to pay a YouTube channel to feature your product when you're doing a walk around. I you, don't think YouTube guidelines would require him to say paid. Um, this this content includes paid um, content. See the little thing that yeah. bobs up. In the I corner? haven't seen. It's not no. in his videos. Is no. it? It's in a lot of the GCN all videos. The, it the, should the, be in the, all the GCN. It's videos, in. It's mind in mind most of the. To be fair, yeah. it is. They do label yeah. it in most yeah. of the videos, Absolutely. and in a thumbnail it says yep. "ad." Yep. I mean, he's showing some small brands, and the videos get a lot of views. I'm the same as you. I feel like he should, but I feel I definitely sense that he's not. My my. My reading between the lines of it would be that the Sea Otter organisers would have covered his expenses and maybe given him some sort of uh, stipend to do this and it's then he's trying to make bank on maybe the networks, the connections that he gets over there. Like you and I talked about trying to get over there, right? For yeah. it. We were like, shit, like, you know, if we want to sort of get brands and stuff to, to talk about, where should we go? Well, Let's go to a trade show, you know. Mm. And so, if you could get someone to cover your expenses to do that, and then you go there over there and make those networks, I, I feel like it's probably off, on his shoulders then to to make make it back. Mm. But like, yeah, yeah, if you're small ass frame manufacturer in like Wisconsin making you know titanium brick slash carbon bikes, yeah, and you're on a Dave Dave Arthur video, immediate impact, it's worth money. Yeah, yeah so I, he. What would he be doing after that? I guess he'd be showcasing them and then he'd have them contacts with them and then maybe he does deals with them after once they've sort of seen as far as I'm concerned. Any FOMO for not being at Sea Otter, Jesse? Because, you know, all all of YouTube seemingly has descended into that expo. I think I saw Vegans there, Francis is there. I don't have any FOMO, but it's interesting because that was, correct me if I'm wrong, Sea Otter's a gravel thing isn't it it's not a road race I think it's, a, it's a gravel I race think it's in, um oh, <laughs> the Jesus, actual race really should yeah. know this it's a more of an off-road uh, oh, expo. Very, oh, insert some sort of is it? cutaway here as chris and jesse no cutaway no cheating it. no no, no cheating. we brought okay, it up okay we're okay, right. gonna stick uh, with it i'm gonna make a claim that there is a crit okay but it's mu- sea otter as an event is an off-road event it's a gravel event so i think it's in monterey which is like I'm pretty sure. It's a gravel race. Road it's race. A- There's a road race. But it is. It's Friday the 20th. Oh, we missed it. Lifetime Sea Otter Classic. Oh, there's a road race. Well, there's one gravel race. Yep. There's a Fondo for Chris. Because Francis no. Cade did a like weighing bikes at Sea Otter and they're all, and they gravel, were all bikes. gravel Maybe that's just America. Maybe they just, they just ride they're just gravel riding gravel bikes, bikes everywhere. <laughs> In fact, I think there's. No, there's, so there's. No, I remember this. He did, he did the mountain bike race. He did the road race and he did the. Crit and he did the gravel race. Okay. It was all like all there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let so, me, um, where was I going with that? Ju- and insert the cart here. <laughs> oh, okay. Go on. Um, <laughs> so uh, do I have FOMO? No. 
Um, but that's because I'm only really concerned with road. I'm done with I'm sick oh, of gravel chat. Here we go. Um, but that's because I consider gravel now a different sport. Like to me, you've got mountain bike, you've got gravel, and you've got road. Whereas five years ago, gravel was like an offshoot of road. And I, it's run off now. It's a total different game. Yep. So I have no FOMO because as far as I'm concerned, it's a different sport. What about uh, taking the race aside? Any FOMO from just the 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 expo, the the being in the buzz of it? <laughs> like, I don't know. No, I'd... Uh, <laughs> They always look fun in a 10-minute yeah. video and then you actually go there in person you're like, oh, this is kind of not See, I've never cool been to one. Was. I've never been to a trade show. I've never been to any sort of bike related. We've been to the, you know, the shitty little, sorry, the the, the smaller versions that occur here. Maybe that's why I'm, so, I'm not getting FOMO. Like have a look at yeah. the homepage of Sea Otter, right? Yeah. And have a look at that main sort of like, like um, super spreader uh, picture there of just people milling around and all those tents, all the brands, all that kind of stuff. You know, I could get around that. Look at all the brands mm. I could go around and froth. You know, oh, you, it, oh I okay. Oh, sorry, I there. have. The, get I, around. This does give me FOMO. Yeah, actually, that I, looks kind of cool. I could get around that. There's a Yeti thing. I can. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm I, I did to to answer my own question. I sorry, did yes. have a bit of. Yes. I did have a bit How of FOMO. How did you think, um, yep. Monterey. Come to the east coast of Australia, much better. But it's so useful for other things, not necessarily bikes, because you kind of have to ride a bike to feel it, but trying out sunnies mm -hmm. or nutrition products and all those little accessory bits where you can come in and try like 20 different brands of sunglasses mm -hmm. and actually see what looks good on your face. Mm -hmm. Super useful for that. Like where else are you going to get to do that? Yeah. It's kind of fun. And if you're going to do a trade show, you might as well go to, to the west coast of California outside around beaches and ride your bike rather than a – German industrial estate uh, with mass convention center, which I believe Eurobike is. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, I, I could definitely, definitely get around that. It looks far more consumer orientated to like Taipei Bike Show or Eurobike, which is just people doing business deals. Yeah. This looks a lot of fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, yeah, you're right. Seems more sort of like distributor insider based, like you need an invite to go. Whereas Sea Otto, mm. just walk in, grab a. Grab a bag and get into it. Grab a non-alcoholic beer. Mm. Okay, so big shout to Rule 28. They re no, shaking your head. <laughs> Put that thing away. This is it. This is what it looks like. So oh this is the aero base layer God. that you've probably heard them all talk You're about. You're not wearing that. I've never put it on, but here it is. When are you going to wear that? I don't know. I'm going to try it. I want to try it. <laughs> Can I have a go? Yeah. But oh, yeah, well, I'm not hardly yeah. going to put it on, am I? So, okay, I'll be honest. When when they reached out and said, do you want to wear a aero base layer, I just thought it was going to be a base layer. Not a bra. Not a bra. A brassiere. But this is it. So this is the thing you see them running. Yeah. yeah. UAE run them in yeah. like they all run on them. the stages, yeah. not even on the... So oh, okay. um, oh. it requires you to run a long sleeve... Suit. Now, I don't know whether it adjusts to or whether it like, matters what you wear over the top of it. Um, obviously, I would have thought the more skin tight, the better to get the benefits of the, the thing. But that's that's it. Right. So that's, that is, is a... Is this an ad? Do we have to... I don't think so. No, I just wanted to talk <laughs> okay. about it because it turned up yesterday and it was not at all what I thought it was. What if Liz walks in, you're trying this on? Well, that's it. What's she going to think? Well, she, well, I, did a, I did a wash last night. I had this in. She, I pulled it out and was hanging it up on the thing, and I'm like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> so there you go. I will. I will try it. I'm going to try it. I got to try some things once. Yeah. I'm going to try the Rule Twenty Eight. There you go. So how much is it? I like the idea. If it saves four watts and it costs well, here's not much or you know. okay. Let me. I don't know. I'm kind of torn with this because it's like I, I like the idea of trying. This is like trying a – they've approached aerodynamics from a different perspective, okay, instead of like changing. We've played around with this stuff with the, the fabrics and all that kind of stuff in the past and fits, and they've kind of gone, all right, well, let's let's approach it from a different angle, what's underneath the fabric. So I do, I do rate that mindset. Mm -hmm. the, the reality of that mindset – being a bra is a bit challenging. Though I will say, like, you do see um, in AFL at the moment or in um, NRL, a lot of the players now do play with this sort of 
man bra thing mm-hmm. over their shoulders. A lot of it is um, compression based, or they even use it to run like a little GPS in the back of their back of their pocket. So it's done in other sports. Mm-hmm. I do feel that this at the Snowy Classic Fondo. Yeah. Would have potentially been a bit too much. But I am doing yeah. a real road race yep. this weekend. Yep. Um, yes, like one of the best road races in, in Australia, the Grafton Dinverell. And I don't know. Like, Are you going to wear aero socks at Grafton? Yes. You do? I'm going to wear the what aero socks. What ones do you have? I'm going to wear these ones. Oh, okay. Yep. Rule 28 Rule aero Rule 28 aero socks. Okay. Nice. Uh, so it also it's developed in the Silverstone Sports Engineering Hub, Chris's favourite wind tunnel. There you go, me so. and Dave, Dave Arthur, we were there. <laughs> I have to rock on yeah. down and. Test Can I it. say we we were actually the guys at Silverstone did reach out and say that if we were ever in the UK, we could bring a bike or two and test it. Wow! So there That's you it. go. Very good. I just have to get to Epic. the UK now, but yeah. So yeah, I'm kind of I am going to run it. I think. Yep. You'll know. On the weekend, <laughs> yeah, whether I see. run it or not. My problem, problem is you got you got to have a long enough sleeve jersey that yes, it doesn't stick. Correct. Stick out. Issue. Issue. Yeah. Also, my mum and dad are helping me out at that particular event, so I'm also quite frightened of them seeing this at any point and going, "What the hell has happened <laughs> to my son?" Um, yeah. So there is that. Yeah. But do you run that? Because I'm a ba- I'm a base layer person, right? Do I then yeah. run the base layer? My normal base layer, which, you know, my, mm. my Rafa Pro Team base layer underneath this, and then I've got basically three layers going. Mm. Not sure about that. Maybe. Not sure. Maybe. Ah. Mm. Oh, you'd wear that and then put the short sleeve base layer over the top, right? That's nice and close to the skin and then. Oh, you think that goes, that goes on the skin? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Base layer over the top. But I would have thought you want the. I should have researched this. I would have thought you want the ribs. Like, oh, you yeah, know, but short sleeve base layer, it's not going to. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah, fair point, fair point, fair point. Yeah, okay. All right, should I wear the man bra <laughs> <No>. on the <laughs> weekend? Would you run one? Probably. Yeah. You can't really tell. Like even on the UAE, you have to look really close yeah. to realize they're even wearing it. See, you should have said that. <laughs> I knew you would. I knew you'd give me shit for it. And then <laughs> I'd ask you like off air, oh, would you run it? And you'd be like, yeah, probably, yeah, if you want. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, you can just leave that in. What you got with me? Well, to a chat. What do we got? Uh, to Remedy Prologue. Joseph Cherney beat Tobias Foss and Remy Cavagna to win. Who the hell's Joseph Cherney? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> now, it was seven minutes, which is a very rare, seven-minute flat prologue. It's a very rare duration to get. So you tend to see weird sort of results on those, but, like, Come out of nowhere. And um, the specialized Shiv, first and third. Oh. Got to be pretty good. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a good boy. Credit where credit is due there. That is pretty. I mean, Remy, Remy Cavani is a motorbike, but Joseph Cherney? I assume you've done your commentator research, which basically means they just pull up yeah. pro cycling stats and have a quick. Yeah, there you go. It. That's yeah. literally all anyone does. But well, he's on. rolled Tobias Foss, yep. who was in second, yep. which is big. But like Joseph Cherney's got no results. He won a stage of the Giro in 2020 and a couple of Czech uh, TT national champs and that's about it. Okay. Just full domestique. Yep. But like comes out and wins a seven-minute prologue. Epic. <laughs> Epic. I feel like Tobias Foss is like the whipping boy at the moment as well. Have you seen this? Like, no. Oh, there was this whole thing about like his salary being – Sort of, he's the world yeah, time trial yeah, champion, world right? TT champ, yeah. That his salary is like as much as Remco's. Oh. That's kind of why I brought the Remco thing up. That that I think Benji asked him or claims to have asked or mentioned it to, to Remco prior to, to Lee's Best on the Age that, um, you know, oh, you know, so and so Tobias is on this much. And Remco's like, oh, really? Oh. So there was a bit of sorry. I just yeah, that was a bit of a side. When you said his name, I was like, oh well, there you go, justifying his salary. No, but he's one of those juniors or under twenty three guys that they sign for huge bucks because they've got the potential physiology to be well, world champion, which he is. So yeah. like he's on one of those like crazy salaries. Yeah, from back in the day. I just find like those time trial weapons to be. Get your bang for your buck in the team for that guy because, like, to win a time trial is such a a hard thing to do. And like, no one remembers second place. And how does that rider then fit into the team? Yeah, he's so much more. Well, I think he's going to be the 
Tom Dumoulin. Like that's okay. what they're envisaging him at okay. because he's a really good climber. I think he's just <laughs> maybe gone too far down the TT. He's too good at TTs. Um, but he was riding. I remember last year he was a, top, a GC contender in a lot of their races. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I, I don't, I don't want to. I mean, I very much believe all <laughs> riders should get paid. You know, pay them more, pay them more. I just kind of found that was a bit mm. funny. Tommy Dumoulin. I just want to save him and talk about him in unresearched facts. Oh, later okay. On. Okay. Good. I've got, got an unresearched fact yeah. for you. Other well to a chat. Um, this I'm, I'm actually kind of sick of the. Oh, it's come off from altitude chat. Oh, it's just like, oh, the rim can we just oh, leave it? It's like pre uh, whatever that race was. Liege, oh, my um, God. Remco is like, oh, no, they interviewed Tade Pogaccia and he's like, oh, yeah, Remco's just come off altitude. So like he'll be good. I'm like, suddenly the only thing that matters is how f- how long ago you were at your altitude hotel in Spain. It's like You, you could literally not hear his name mentioned with without like coming down off the off, – off the volcano. It was like, and I had these images in my head of like this guy sort of like, you know, coming down from the high mountains, you know, beard everywhere. He's like a, a Nepalese, like a Himalayan sort of like rock climbing type person. It's just like, what what has happened here? It's just, he's been training. He's just been training. That's yep. fine. <laughs> I'm glad you talked about that. I didn't write uh, that down on the nose. For it's that. like on these like talking points, you've got like, I'm, I'm just going to bring it up, whatever. It's like, you had like SL7 is so fast, everyone wants to be on it. And add in there, I've got like coming off altitude. It's just like the thing you say mm. and it's, it's suddenly it's just so important. But then you've got, to, you've got to have the second sentence, which is not sure how he's going to adapt. Oh. Or it's like not sure – they're not yeah. sure how he'll, it, whether the adaptions will have happened yet. So yeah. there's like – it's an irrelevant comment then because it's like <laughs> he could be good, he could be bad. Yeah. Like everyone, yeah. Righto, to finish up, we're going to do some unresearched facts, Jesse Coyle. Um, I'm going to start with a theory that I have that um, seat tube angles are suddenly going to start becoming steeper and steeper on bikes. That's going to be the next thing we're going to have happen to us. And this is all coming back to the fact that our bikes are now so dumbed down and... Uh, we're, we're all running 20 PSI and we can't feel the road anymore, that we're going to be able to be thrown further over the bottom bracket into more and more aggressive positions and it won't bother us, bother us as much. You won't need to be as fit, quote unquote, to be in that position. Right? I'm on board with this. I'm yep. big on board. And I think it comes down to aerodynamics too. People are saving four watts from a frame and it's like, well, you're, still, watts from a bra. <laughs> you're still sitting... 20 centimetres over the bottom bracket and you're losing watts. And that's get forward, get that head down, get the back down and you'll be riding way faster Rip in. on board. My second one was Tom Dumoulin, Giro 2019, I think mm-hmm. was the one. The Tommy Dumoulin stop on the side of the road. Bicarbonate soda protocol disaster. Yeah. Yep. So this was... Um, a situation was similar to the – we discussed this a while ago, that um, soup-style thing that the guys were running, that they were testing a bicarbonate for impact towards the back end of a stage and he had taken that coming into the final climb and when you got to go with a bicarbonate setup, you got to go. Mm-hmm. Fact. Fact. Yep. Highly likely. What else is going to give him the absolute runs – wouldn't be gastro. He wouldn't be riding the stage. He's, yeah. Next one, I've done a deep dive into the trainer road controversy on all the forums and Chad Timmerman was, in fact, fired because AI is getting too good <laughs> and he's been put out of a job. That is why yep. they have announced he has been let go. I'm sure that's pretty certain. You, you would have read that on a Reddit forum somewhere? Yes. Yes, Yep. definitely fact. Yes, 100%. absolutely. Yep, get yep. on board. A couple of quick housekeeping ones, guys. Thank you so much for all the comments on YouTube. Can I just quickly say that we're far more likely to read and reply to the stuff on YouTube. I know you guys are messaging us both on Instagram. We do try and to get through those, but honestly, we're way more likely to reply or see the YouTube stuff rather than the, the Instagram ones if, if possible. 
But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are watching on YouTube, do make sure to hit the thumbs up and leave us a review on the podcast players. We'll see you next week. See you then.